Hi there. Welcome to the office chat of February 2017. What has happened in the last couple of weeks? Well, there are four issues I would like to briefly discuss with you. The first is the situation in Pakistan. We've seen a number of very um, deadly attacks, uh, one on a shrine, a Sufi shrine in the south of the country that killed 90 people. A very deadly attack. We know Pakistan is very high on the list of countries that are facing a lot of terrorism, but it seems that with these attacks that there's a new wave or an escalation of violence. There are all kinds of extremist groups, uh, sometimes uh, related to Pakistan, that seem to step up their efforts to attack the government of Pakistan, its judiciary, its police force and its army. And we see also a very um, uh, quick reaction by the armed forces. And here's a quote by the uh, chief of the army who responded to the latest attacks by saying, each drop of the nation's blood shall be avenged and avenged immediately. And so they did. The security services have, kill, have closed the borders or some of the border crossings with Afghanistan and killed um, and arrested dozens of mili uh, militants. And of course, everybody's worried that it will lead to a new escalation, a new cycle of violence, or hopefully will lead to more peace and security for the Pakistani people. We have to see. Then the second issue, something completely different. Uh, there are a lot of uh, security summits and one of the most important annual summit is the one in the city of Munich. And a lot of politicians come there to talk about uh, security, the vice president, the new vice president of the United States, for instance, but also, a no uh, also people that are from the, uh, the world of business and NGOs. Uh, one of them, Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft. And he said something interesting. Um, uh, also, uh, if, if we look at waves of terrorism, uh, we ask in the, I think it's the second week, uh, what is perhaps a new wave of terrorism? Well, Bill Gates gives us uh, some ideas. He says that um, uh, during this summit, he says that the next epidemic could originate on the computer screen of a terrorist. Um, of a terrorist with terrorist in intent using uh, genetic engineering to create a synthetic version of the smallpox virus or a super contagious and deadly strain of flu. And he's worried about bioterrorism. Is that a new, uh, the new wave of terrorism or the new modus operandi? It's interesting to hear um, Bill Gates uh, discussing this. Of course, it's not new. Uh, what we call CBRN terrorism, so chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear terrorism is not new. Um, but threat assessments seem to differ over time. Uh, the more and more people who think that it's more likely, given the knowledge that is available, some of the ingredients and uh, the materials that are available, but still in general it's seen as a low probability, but high or extremely high impact threat. So the chance this will happen is small, but the impact might be enormous. Uh, but it's very good to reassess uh, this threat. Are there changes today? Maybe in, if you look at Islamic State, uh, they have access to certain chemical um, products. They had access to, for instance, Mosul University. And there are some rumors and some indication that they try to test new chemical weapons. Will they use it? It's difficult to say. It's also difficult to uh, build these kind of weapons in a war uh, situation, but it's something to be worried about. Uh, politicians are worried about it, but Bill Gates also expressed his concern about bioterrorism. Well, that brings me to the situation in Syria and Iraq. Um, War-torn uh, region, IS losing ground in many parts of that region, in the northwest uh, near Aleppo. It's a city called Al Bab. Um, it was about to fall already last month, but they still are keeping that uh, uh, town under IS control. It's been attacked by Turks and, and, and allies of the opposition, but also the Syrian Arab army. Interesting to see what will happen, especially after the city will fall. Will these parties then start to fight or not? Um, very surprising last couple of days. Uh, a Kurdish uh, coalition supported by the US and others. Um, are now at the outskirts of Raqqa, the self-proclaimed, uh, or the capital of the self-proclaimed caliphate, and have cut off supply lines between Raqqa and Iraq. For instance, the city of Mosul. Well, that city, partly liberated, the eastern part, 
but now the western part is under attack by the Iraqi forces and its allies, various militias, and they seem to be closing in, so they're near the, the borders of the town, but not in the western part yet, and uh, people expect a long struggle because IS has been waiting for this attack for a long time, digging tunnels, all kinds of defensive systems, using a lot of suicide attacks, so that um, they're closing in, but IS is not defeated yet, uh, but they're losing ground. That brings me to the last point, uh, a recent report by the Dutch Intelligence and uh, Security Service, um, it's called uh, Focus on Returnees, um, and it's a report that, um, a very short brief uh, or, or paper, uh, that will um, inform the public about uh, the threat posed by returnees. And the main point of this uh, report is that those that return um, uh, in the coming months and years, and they don't expect immediately a lot of them to return, even though IS is losing ground, but they expect in the long run more people to return, and they are more uh, potentially dangerous than those that returned in the past, partly because they have been around in the war zone uh, longer, uh, maybe more radicalized, but definitely battle-hardened, more skills to fight, and most of them have a link to extremist groups, terrorist groups like the Islamic State. The majority of the Dutch that are still out there have joined Islamic State, so they expect those that return to be potentially more dangerous than people that returned in the past. If you're interested in this uh, report, it gives you a good idea how the Dutch authorities look at this threat, uh, have a look at their website, so www.aivd.nl, but we'll also upload it on the Coursera dashboard. That's it for now. See you next month.